Okay, today I'm gonna replace the fuel pump on my Mercruiser 260 engine, or better known as a Chevy 350 engine. And this engine I'm working on is in from my uh, 1984 Ranger 395V inboard outboard boat. And uh, even though the engine was running and the fuel pump was working, when I pulled the engine out, it is 36 years old. So I think it's time to install a new one on there. And so we're going to get started right now. I've got the, the fuel lines here, the supply line, and then the one that goes up to the carburetor. The fuel pump is by Sierra. I ordered it online from one of the uh, supply warehouses for boat parts. And I'm going to get started loosening the lines up. And so we're going to use a, a backing wrench and take these lines loose. I hit them earlier with a little penetrating oil to let them, to let them soak in. I'm using a, a line wrench to help keep from uh, stripping that nut. And a good pro wrenching tip when you're going to get these lines loose, um, you can get a couple wrenches just like this and then use your hands to squeeze them together to loosen them up and that's a lot easier than just trying to have one wrench on there and, and bust it loose you can get a lot of force there just squeezing those together like that there we still got a little little fuel coming out now we'll get the other one and then again position those wrenches just so i can I can squeeze them together and loosen them up. Right, and now we're going to take this little suction line loose. This line here goes up to the carburetor and these marine fuel pumps are designed with dual diaphragms and if one of them starts to leak, vacuum from the carburetor will suck the fuel up and into the engine to be burned and that'll prevent fuel from leaking down into your boat and causing a fire hazard. So you don't want to just grab a any old fuel pump that'll fit a small block Chevy and put it on there. Even though it will fit and work, it doesn't have the safety feature of having the fuel getting sucked into the carburetor in the engine if it were to start leaking. Loosen the mounting bolts. Now we've got the, the fuel pump taken out of there. And as you can see, how these fuel pumps work is this sits in here. There's a rod that comes out of the engine block that's run off the camshaft. And as the camshaft goes around, those lobes will push that rod in and out onto that to this handle to pump your fuel. Okay, then we're going to take this over to the workbench, transfer the fittings. Okay, we got the fuel pump off. We're going to transfer the, the fittings. 
three quarter. Transfer the first one. And it is a uh, pipe fitting. So I'm gonna put a little bit of thread sealant just on the end of the threads. And want to be careful not to get any on the end because I don't want any of that thread sealant to go into my, my carburetor or my new fuel pump. All right, got one fitting down. the other one and again I'm gonna put some thread sealant on the threads and again since this is going up to the carburetor I want to make sure not to get any of this on the end just just a couple of threads down so it can still do its job seal off any any leaks there Now, I want to disassemble this fuel pump because I really want to see what the inside of a 36-year-old fuel pump looks like. Popped apart nicely there. So let's check it out. And you see how this fuel pump works. You've got the push rod coming down from the engine that runs off the camshaft and it goes in and out as the camshaft lobes push it. And then it pushes this lever. And as that pushes down, and it pushes the, uh, the fuel pump diaphragm and pumps your fuel. Just like I thought, it's a good idea that we change that out. You can see the cracks, the cracks in that rubber. It wouldn't have ran too long there before it would have, would have had a failure. But amazing, 36 years and it, and it was still working. And you can see those those cracks down there in the in the fuel pump. So good thing we got changed out. And then, as you can see where this pipe is here, if this diaphragm was to start leaking, these marine fuel pumps are designed where vacuum from your carburetor will suck that fuel up to, uh, to help with the safety issues and help from creating that fire hazard in the bottom of your boat by having that, that fuel leaking from a pump down there in the bottom.
Let's go ahead and take, take this apart too. There's a couple of standard screws. Get my, my trusty screwdriver. Take these out. Got some stretch there. We got a little bit of debris in there. She looks pretty clean for being on there for 36 years. Not too bad, but it's going to run a lot better with the new one, and hopefully not have any have any fuel leaks. Okay, here's the tricky part. If you look in there, there is the the rod that runs off the camshaft to power the fuel pump. I've got it held up with the screwdriver and what we need is for the end of the fuel pump to be uh, right there where that rod is so it can push up and down on it and actuate it. So um, you can remove this plate and put some luber plate on there and, and slide that pin back up in there and that'll just kind of help hold it in position. Um, however, I don't have the gasket to replace there, and then, so I'm just going to try to uh, hold that pin up and, and slide that lever in there into position um, without taking that plate loose. So now we've got our rod pushed up in the hole and there's a little access hole right here that you can remove and I've stuck a longer bolt through there and I'm just using some pressure and applying on that to hold that pin up into position. If you look around here now we've got it held up, held up out of the way and I'm holding it there with my finger and then now now I can do the uh, do the install. Okay, I got the bolts started. Um, use this access hole just to push through there and hold the shaft in position so we have room to get our actuator for the fuel pump up in there. Got it started, got our gasket in position. Okay, and then don't forget to reinstall the bolt that we removed to uh, access the, the fuel pump rod. Um, and it's also a good idea to put some silicone around that um, because that could be a place that you could get an oil leak since it right has access to the engine. And then there's quite a bit of oil that, that runs down and keeps everything uh, oiled up. And uh, so now I'm, I'm going to tighten the fasteners. And again, if you get it apart and you don't have the clearance in there, sometimes you have to rotate the engine a little bit and get that cam off the lobe so you've got, got room to install.
put our few lines back in. Now sometimes these light these lines can be difficult once you take them loose, especially if they got a little bend in them when you got them out of the way. So I'm gonna have to loosen this line off up here at the top to give myself some some wiggle room to get it started down below. Finally got that one going. Had to loosen it up at the top, wiggle it around a little bit. Any of you that have messed with these flared fittings, like these fuel lines, know how difficult they can be if they're just out of line just a little bit. We'll tighten that one up. We'll tighten it back up at the top where we loosened it. tight fit on that and now our fuel line that runs up to our carburetor we're gonna get that back into position tighten it down now it's loose because I've got the carburetor removed because I've had to remove the engine so I'm holding it from engine hoist so all this is a lot easier to get to with the engine out of the boat hence why I'm doing it doing it now instead of having that failure um, while the engine's in there. A little preventative replacement. All right, we've got a few lines on. And then this hose that we talked about earlier, I'm gonna put that one back on. And this is the one that runs up to the carburetor that the vacuum line um, will create a vacuum source for the fuel pump so if the fuel pump does leak in the future it'll suck that extra fuel down into the carburetor and the engine to be burned instead of collecting in the bottom of your boat to cause that fire hazard and then that's it and that's how you install the uh, the fuel pump on the Merc Cruiser 260 engine also known as the uh, same as the Chevrolet 350 and, uh, and like I said you want to make sure that uh, you don't use just a regular old uh, fuel pump from a from a small block on there even though it'll fit and work it doesn't have the uh, the dual diaphragms and the safety feature of the uh, the vacuum suck off if it if it starts to leak fuel <laughs>